Hello, statistics students. It's just me, and here I am with more normal distribution. In this problem, I'm going to solve for the unknown value of a mean, given that I know a quantity of data underneath the normal curve. Don't forget that the normal distribution has 50% of the data above the mean, 50% below the mean, we're still using the fact that a z-score simply represents the number of standard deviations a given value falls either above or below the mean and we have the amazing power of the magic formula. So what problem am I going to solve this time? Well Wanda is still busily making widgets, high quality widgets, um, for distribution worldwide. She had a recent salary survey and it indicated that 60% of her employees will earn at least $872 a week. It was also known that the standard deviation of the salaries is $100, but what she doesn't know is the value of the mean for her employee's salary. So I'm going to take the same four-step approach. I'm going to determine the value for which you are solving. I'm then going to calculate an area under the curve using the rules of normal distribution. I'm going to delve into the guts or the body of the z-score table to find a z-score associated with that area and then I'm going to apply our magic formula to solve for that unknown value. So this is what this problem looks like because the question told us that at least 60% of the employees made $872 or more. Well, I knew, even though I didn't know the value of the mean, I knew this value of X had to fall to the left of the mean. Because if I said at least 60% or made at least $872, then what I know is that that's the minimum. In order to get 60% of the data, I've got to use all 50% here and then 10% here. If I had put this value of X up here, on this side of the curve and then move to the right, it is humanly impossible based on normal distribution for me to get to this 60%. So I knew that the 60% had to include this entire right side of the curve plus the remainder portion from the left side of the curve. What that gives us is that gives us a negative z-score, which is important when you go to use your magic formula. So I know that I'm going to look up and the area in the normal distribution curve table rather associated with 0.1000% of the data. So let's go look at that. All right, so here I am with my normal distribution table, and I'm looking for 0 0.1000. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I've caught 0 .9, 0 0.987. It's the closest I can get without going over suggested retail price um, and without being too far off. So I know that's a z-score of a negative. 0 0.25. So I'm going to take that z of negative 0.25, which represents 10% of the data, and I'm going back to my problem. All right, so here I am, and I'm going to plug in what I know into my, as I call it, the magic formula. I know x was equal to 800 and $72. I knew that the Z was a negative 0.25. I knew that the standard deviation was $100.
but I don't know what the mean of the distribution is. So that's my unknown. So I'm going to say 872 equals an unknown value of the mean plus a negative 0.25 times the value of my standard deviation of a hundred dollars and I'm going to then say 872 is equal to the mean in this case now minus twenty five dollars so I'm going to add my 872 plus my 25 and I'm going to end up with eight hundred and ninety seven dollars as the value of the mean of that distribution and remember for most of these problems we can always substitute back in right? because now what I know is I solved and I told you that the mean is no longer unknown I know it's eight hundred and ninety seven dollars so the question is if I know that this z-score was a negative 0.25 then I know that this should solve to say 872 is equal to 897 plus a negative 0.25 times 100 and so what I'm looking for is to say that 872 is the same thing as 8 97 minus $25 and even in my sad math world I know that that solves correctly so big smiley face and I think you all are almost done with these videos <laughs>